I don't remember anything about my first day of high school. Not one thing. I'm going to tell you what mine was, okay? I get off the bus at the high school, go in the gym. We're all in the gym, you know, and I don't. I think the principal is going to talk to us all. Why we went to the gym and didn't go to the auditorium, I don't know, but we was in the gym. So. Mystery. I'm sitting in about the halfway thing in the seats in the gym. And it's a bunch of us freshmen. And as always, right, you got seniors above us and seniors below us. That's so, a that's as always? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what happened, the first thing that happened, okay, is, hey. A senior sandwich. <laughs> yeah. They was pushing this little chubby guy on me, and I pushed him off of me. <laughs> Well, the next thing happened is he done sucker punched me in the in the in the eye. You done got- black my eye. Okay, so the fight's on. Okay, and this about is- this goes on for about five minutes. He swings at me. I duck, and he makes a bad mistake. He hit me with his fist on the on my head, and it was just like somebody shot a twenty two rifle. You heard pow, and he said, "Hold it, hold it, hold it!" Grabbed his hand. And when he said, hold it, hold it, grab his hand, I knocked him down, was on top of him. And they drug me <laughs> off of him. So your first day of high school. Fight. You got jumped. Yeah, I got uh, sucker no, punched. No wonder you remember your first day. Oh, no, no. Look, and here's, here's the wildest thing about all this is, me and Charles, that was the guy's name that the seniors pushed me on, we become bad friends. <laughs> and, so and he you, sucker punched you. And, and you, he sucker punched me. And you whooped But him. he paid for it. Because they had to drag me off of him when he said, hold it, hold it, I'm hurt. I said, yeah, you sure are. Just started just wailing on that head. You and Chubby Chuck. That's right. No, Charles. Oh, Charles. Chubby Charles. Chubby Chuck. Yeah. Well, Chuck. He had me about, oh, probably 175. So he's about 300 then. Yeah, he there's was, no he way was pretty, you was He was more pretty heavy on the hoof. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was, was our, he was a guard. So okay. y'all were the exact uh, opposites. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was string bean. Well, why did he punch you? Huh? Cause hey, they pushed him. They pushed me on you know him on me and when I pushed him back, he nailed me. I hate you to kind of. It was one of them. Hey, it was a surprise. Okay, for me. I don't disagree with you often. What? I'm gonna disagree because you started this story by saying. I bet ninety percent of boys' first day of high school. Yeah, they've was had like a fight. <laughs> what? That you number significantly lower than ninety. <laughs> oh no, it'd be fifty-fifty anyway. I thought you was gonna say the same. No, it'd be told 50/50. You to take the elevator to the third floor, and there wasn't no third floor, and there wasn't no, no elevator. Okay. Or, you know. You. <laughs> like, I don't, I'm with Martin on this one. We didn't go. Hey, I'm telling you, take a poll. Take a poll All across right. the nation. First day at high school, how many of you had a fight? Why are you yelling? Golly, he's little fired right. up, boy. He's fired. He remembers that that's sucker. Right. But I, what I don't. Oh, ten steps. I'm going to say two <laughs> or three people respond with yes. Oh, it'd be more than that. But y'all were dumb enough to fight in the gym. Everything we did was a fight out in a parking lot whenever it happened. Nobody well, no, wanted no, to get in trouble. We got in school and was settled down. When yeah. the fight was, hey, the coaches would normally, if you started a fight, yeah. you know, a couple of coaches would grab you by the scuff of your neck and we'd go up behind the. Uh, 4-H barn where they had all the animals. You know, talking about right, now and push it out there and talking about settle it. That, that, was, that was back in the days where teachers and principals could actually discipline oh, yeah. the students. Yeah, they took care of business. And if you got in a fight. Mm. Hey, they didn't. They didn't break it up. <laughs> they just so put they, it on pause. Yeah, they just put it on pause. That's went right. behind the building and then said, "Okay, get you know, hey, go for it. Beat the living you know what out of each other." And then after you done it, tell me, all right, shake hands down. Let's go back to work. Let's go back to school. Did y'all get paddlings at, uh, at school? No, no, I did. We got one of them things called a leather belt. Okay. Oh. Okay, it wasn't no paddle. I got a piece of timber laid across my rear end yeah. at Westman. Oh, when we, were, when, I, <laughs> when we were coming up through high school, what percentage of junior highs and high schools do you think had paddled? When paddled, we were there? Yes. All of them. All of them. They all had it when I, I got paddled once. What? What? How, what? The, what's the percentage now? Some of them had paddles. Some Less of them used than belt. ten. Now? Less than ten. Oh, yeah. now you couldn't oh. even. Oh, they'd, they'd arrest the teacher. <laughs> yeah, that's what. It's yeah, true. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, and they had to put the coaches, all the coaches would have went to jail. Something tells me somewhere out there in West Texas, they still paddle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <somewhere. laughs> they are somewhere, yeah. or North yeah. Arkansas. Oh, yeah. West Texas, Central Arkansas, hey, North Probably Arkansas, North Carolina, Western South Canada. Carolina. They still, they still. Got, no. Yeah. No, they're out. Oh, no, they ain't out. Yeah, they're out. Now, still, West Virginia. Hey. Yep, maybe they still oh, yeah, on that West bag. Virginia do it. We all were afraid of my uh, one of the principals at our school because there was a rumor he had an electric paddle. Electric paddle, electric and I guess paddle. it was like a taser and a paddle that. Well, he had in one in Prodders, cattle Prodders. That one at Coach <laughs> I married his paddle. granddaughter. That one that Coach Ainsworth had at West Monroe High School must have had a lot of cane on it because when he dope popped me that first time, everything went numb. <laughs> <laughs> he hit me so hard. You know what, though? Well, you would have been old boy, though. But you know what? I deserved it, yeah. too. Yeah. Well, hey, there you go. I knew when I went in there, I said, they done got the mm. kid. They done got me, son. <laughs> Coach Ainsworth, mm. about five, eight, maybe. Oh. And let me tell you, he got a little crow hop. I saw that shadow coming, son. Ooh. I said, it's yeah. going to hurt. I guess yeah. he was ex-military, probably. He was full time football coach and assistant principal, so whatever he, he was. He probably did was, some time in the military. Mr. Stokes got me, and he's the opposite of 5'8. He was 6'8, I think, yeah. and just everybody's scared of him because he's huge. Yeah. Yeah. I can't and he hit me with that paddle, and I was like, that didn't hurt. And it mm -hmm. took a second, and once the sting came into play, I was like, I'm never sitting down again. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that sounds like well, coach, coach Hicks. He was 6'8, about 390. <laughs> Big oaf cousin. Oh, oh yeah, he did three ninety. <laughs> yeah, when he grabbed me by the neck, it was like this. <laughs> you off the ground. Come with me, young man. Uh, Tell me, yes, sir. <laughs> well, we talk about this like it was a hundred years ago. Oh no. Yeah. Well, I remember that as it was five minutes ago. It oh, was no. way back to nineteen hundred, though. Yeah. I was early. Oh no, technically, I guess mine would have been about year two thousand because I was a junior. So it would have been right around the turn of the millennium when, <laughs> when the whole world didn't end. Every morning, our computers didn't crash. How times and how people have changed. Oh, what are you talking about? Every morning we would say the Pledge of Allegiance. Everybody would stand up, put your hand over your heart, say the pledge, and then the teacher would say a prayer, and then we'd start our day. And if you did something bad, there were consequences. <laughs> oh, have times changed. Oh, have they changed, yeah. Ooh, or, the, man. or the worse. That was the only time I got paddled, but I bear crawled enough to peel all the skin off my hands yeah. to do another stupid crap when the teachers would just tell the coaches and not go the other route because they knew whatever the coaches did would be worse it's than going worse. down there and getting a couple of licks. Coach so. Bristow would put you in the long jump pit and just tell you start jumping in the sand until you threw up or he got tired of watching you. and He, oh, either he that could or, watch that for a really long either time. Either that or put you in the circle. Oh, no. Coach Shaw's a big believer put you up under that chute. Oh, it yeah, in the cage? It was a cage, but <laughs> it was all all square tubing. So if you come up a little early, cage. your bell rung. For, oh, yeah, yeah. And you just kept, you kept. What was it? It's it's like a cage for offensive linemen. Yep. But what you did when you got in trouble, you know, it had five slots. So you'd take on people inside the cage. Okay. Teaching you to stay low. But when you got in trouble, you had to bear crawl all the way through that thing. You go in, out, in, out. And you you best not stop when you got to that other end. You just snaked your way through it, bear crawling the whole time. And if you stood up, doing, doing, yeah, yeah. I mean, just Another ring fight. your bell. Don't give. <laughs> and the whole time, he's just berating you. Just yelling. And you're saying, I don't want to end up back here. But, you know, hey. One of my that's, why, that's why I, I just, it's my opinion. But that's why that we were most good. Most coaches. Did some military time. Or they wanted to. Yeah. Or, it was their second well, Maybe that's there. where the Army got it from. I don't know. Yeah. No. I well, I th but I think you see the ones that run their program, like the military, are successful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would, I would say that Alabama football is oh, I don't know. an equivalent to a military institution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. my way or the highway. Yeah. But yeah. even the military, and, the – Discipline has changed yeah. dramatically yeah, yeah. over the years. And speaking of the military side, we, we, I got a good friend of ours oh, who just it. happens to come through town who is an expert on such things yeah. that we, we might get a chance to talk to him today. Yeah, he's been bit. in, what, for 30 years, right? 30-something years. Yeah, yeah, he retired after 30 years in the military. E-9. I was talking to him like he was an E-3 when he was duck hunting with us. <laughs> I had no idea. Hey, he, he was, was in charge. E9. You was in charge. I, I, I was the E9 that day. Yeah, yeah, you was the E9 in charge of the outfit, boys. And, and when we got done, they said, you know, he's an E9. I'm like, what? 
I yeah, know don't, that. don't apologize to him. I said, JR, I ain't going to apologize to you. What was your said, rank, sir? Uh, mine was, he said, look. You almost made it there. Well, no. Oh. No, I had one problem that, hey, uh, with Mouse. my problem, you're not going to make E8 or E9. That mouth? The mouth. I said, yeah. <laughs> He's a little lippy. You got it, yeah. Uh, little lippy. He's a little lippy. The same thing that got well, you in trouble with that, Chubby though, Charles. Look, <laughs> I, hey, I'm like <laughs> yeah. old Clint Eastwood oh. in the movies about a man's got to know his limitations. Okay, I know my limitations. Okay, I, I would have not made, I probably might, didn't even make a good E7, but <laughs> I know good and well I wouldn't have made a good E8 or E9 because you got to be political. Yeah. And I'm not political, and, and plus you got to be smart enough to know when to shut your mouth and, and, and just listen and say, okay, yeah, okay. And we all know that filter been gone. And no, no, that's <laughs> yeah. it. That been gone, broke, whatever. Okay. May have not it even come in the box. Uh, yeah, it may have not even been been there to begin with. Okay. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, let's no. take a break. We'll be back right after <laughs> okay. this. Let's do it. All right, so it's uh, it's a thing in here. We've talked about it. I've been getting healthier. Stone's kind of my, my health coach. We, we talk about, you know, eating healthy, doing right. We talk about exercising here some. But. You know, one thing I've loved is a new sponsor we've had recently called Athletic Greens, and I'm just 100% honest with you. I liked it so much, they sent us some for free, and I was like, I need some more of this. I had used it all. So I went to ask Stone if he had any left over and if he wasn't using it, and he was asking me the same question because he yeah. had used all his. And then your boy Christian, Sadie's husband, uh-huh. he put me on to this, and I got to admit, <clears throat> there, I've noticed two things in particular. From taking this, I get I sleep better at night. Oh yeah, without a doubt, I, I get better sleep, and I do not have, as Phil would say, any bowel mischief whatsoever. <laughs> so look, here's one of my favorite parts is you know we've been dieting. I've been I've been on a diet, but this one, whatever diet you're on, it works for it. Keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, gluten free, whatever you are, this stuff works for you. And like Stone says, better sleep, better mental clarity. I feel great. So, look, here's what it is. It's one scoop. That's all you need. Throw it in some water. And instead of all these different pills, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right, all in one little scoop. And this special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, and all the things right there in one scoop every morning. It's great. And it's really not that expensive. That's why I was going to order some with our code. It's less than three bucks a day. And what is that? What is three bucks when it comes to just feeling great? They got a ton of reviews, five stars. Professional athletes use it. Dan the Butler uses it. Christian the Macho Man. Huff uses it, Captain so America. Captain America himself. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into cold and flu season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a bunch of different pills and supplements. Mm. To just, hey, scoop water, drink it. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash duck. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash duck to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Two things. Wake up, do your cardio, chug your Athletic Greens. It will make a huge difference. Put those headphones on, Jr. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna talk to you like you in E3. <laughs> well, it don't matter now. I mean, he's, <laughs> he ain't he's out. out. Well, he I was a little Georgia. bit better Nothing. when I was at E3. Yeah. Yeah. He's retired now, ain't he? Oh I mean, yeah, oh yeah. He's so retired. he's just a yeah. civilian. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you talk to him however you want to. Oh, that's right. Now looking at him, I recommend it being kind. Still. Oh yeah, yeah. But, uh, he's still in pretty good shape. <laughs> Look, he's, he's, he's in pretty good shape. Well, he, yeah, but he was yeah. in the Air Force, so the PT standards are not. Yeah, they ain't what they used to be. No, but no. Whenever you boys are ready to go run, we can go run. <laughs> no, I, I ain't gonna run with you. Whenever you're ready. No, no. I, no. I, 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 I you sw- see me running, get your gun ready and shoot what's chasing me. I swore off at running. Okay. <laughs> you always end up out of breath. Hey, I never I'm understood the appeal. No, well, no, no. But here's the first thing on 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 the military. Okay. This ought to be good. I don't know about I don't know about the Well, hell, Air introduce Force. who's this is, this is the first thing. Let's, well, hey, let's introduce who's sitting beside well, you. Well, introduce him for us. All right. What was your rank, JR? Uh I was the chief master sergeant. That's right. Chief uh, the Air Force 
Uh, we got it right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we Keith right. Masters hard. Yeah, okay. Right. So we got J.R. Lida here with us today, a special guest. He's famous in uh, West Texas and <laughs> East Georgia. <laughs> That's a well big, known. That's a big gap. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know I was. Hey, I covered a lot of territory. Yeah. Texas and uh, Georgia. I'll take that. But okay. retired. How many years, uh, Jr.? I did thirty years. Thirty years in the Air Force. Thirty years. Retired, Chief Master Sergeant. Is that right? That's yeah. right, Chief Master Sergeant. Man, that's the highest rank you can attain in the Air Force. In the Air Force. NCO. NCO. Wives. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. We're, back we're, to what I was going to say. Okay. okay. <laughs> The, the military, I don't know about the Air Force. I'm speaking only Army. Yeah. The military's program, okay, PT program in, in the Army stinks to high heaven. Okay, because, hey, I run five miles every day, five days a week. It never got me in shape. So something is wrong with their PT program. It had nothing to do with it, Winston's. Yeah, it didn't have to do with them well, cigarettes. Hey, no, no, not, even if not, you smoked, not, I don't care if you smoked a carton a day. <laughs> if you run five miles every day for five uh, days a week, you should be able to run five miles and don't even break a sweat. How Sometimes, far could you run right now? Right now, I can't run nowhere. <laughs> Okay. Sometimes I think it's got to do with what you do after you run those five miles. Uh oh. What did you do after you ran the five miles uh, every day? Well, hey, not much. <laughs> <laughs> That's the story of my life. <laughs> hey, I never did do much when I was in the military. Found a place. Oh, he found a place, took a nap. Yeah. Had him a breathing treatment. Oh, I'm probably yeah. the only person in the military that got an a hour nap in every day. Regardless of what was going on, continuous was, or yeah, oh no, if it's at war or whatever, peacetime it don't make a difference. <laughs> hey, when I this boy gets tired, I'm gonna find me somewhere to get some a nap. So I had I had Cy and Stone uh, beam in in the middle of COVID uh, to talk to all of our airmen during the awards ceremony. Right, this was a big deal for everybody, and everybody tuned in, and all Cy did was tell them how to take a nap for an hour every day. <laughs> <laughs> You think they got it figured out? <laughs> and look, I imagine they really enjoyed it. Go, oh. hey, look, you know, you talking about unsung heroes, okay? I mean, military people that serve. Oh, they ain't unsung around here. Well, I know, but it, most of you know, yeah, a lot of places they are, place. but not around here. Yeah. No, we, but they just, you know, uh, they do not get the credit. And and his wife is sitting right over her. She's a servant too. Okay, because oh, she's married 100%. to him. <laughs> well, okay, he served and so did she. Okay, because she had to take care of all the business while he was out taking care of all the soldiers and everybody else. So I'll actually brag on her just a little bit. Not only did she take care of me, but uh, she served uh, 23 years herself. So she she retires at E7, oh, okay. Master Sergeant out of the Air Force as well. Yeah. Look at there. Well, there hey, first and foremost, thank both of you for serving our nation. And I know she don't have a microphone, but yeah. th does it make you feel any better that you and Cy – we're the same rank. <laughs> <laughs> she was probably a better E7 than I was. Oh, okay. okay. So, yeah. Oh, I, I'm going to go ahead oh, and hey, remove she probably, probably uh, from that. She probably could say you know, no or yes, okay? Yeah. Uh, instead of running my mouth. Something oh, tells man. me they put you at E7 so they wouldn't have to fool with you. No, no. Hey, look, and I really believe this. I was actually a, a, a secret agent for the Army. No, no, I'm serious. Because you got to understand something. Who were I you? Drove, I, I drove. I drove all the way here today for this. For, for oh yeah. No, no, no. Because oh, yeah. you got to understand something. Okay? Who were you spying on? Me, the army? No, no. Me right. and about thirty other E sevens. Okay, we're stationed at <clears throat> Europe. Okay, at two hundred Tamsey. Okay, which is supply, you know, for Europe, you know, and the world really. But anyway, all thirty of us. I was. You probably won't believe this, but I was in the top 5%. Not okay, physically. <laughs> Army-wide in supply, my job. I was in the top 5% Army-wide, okay? So me and these 30 guys that I know, okay, we all was, <clears throat> went to the same schools and all this stuff. We're at 200 Tamsey, okay? I'm in the operational sale, okay? So here comes the promotion list. And they're all saying, hey, did you get your E8? And I said, no, I didn't make it. 
And they said, wait a minute, whoa, 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 what are you talking about? You didn't make it. I said, I didn't make it, guy. You know, well, all 30 of them did. Mm-hmm. You know, but look, if they had promoted me to E8, they would have had to move me out of my job that I was doing. And the reason I'm saying that I was actually a secret agent is they kept, look, I had been to this place. The first time I went, I had been there three days. Me and a lieutenant colonel and a GS-12 just head-to-head clash. Boom. And ever, you know, the first day. I'd been there three days, and we, boom, it's a blow up, you know. <laughs> you know so it, my life was miserable for the first three years of that that tour. Well, guess what? The next time I get ordered to Germany, it's the same place, the same division. You know, after this happens about five or six times, and every time I go there, I'm in trouble as soon as I get there. Why would you keep sending me back if I'm just trouble? So what, but I was told by the NCOs above me, okay, that, hey, I busted a, a, a smuggling ring over there that was selling all of our equipment worldwide. Okay, they said I broke it up because, hey, I'm doing all the paperwork on this stallish stuff we've got. And look, when I come up missing 10 of something, you're going to have to give me an answer of what happened to them 10 items. Okay. Yeah. So I kept asking them, hey, then that's how the, the ring got busted up. And I kept asking questions, and finally somebody said, oh, well, I know what happened to it. It's being stole by this gang of thieves that are, you know, worldwide. Secret agents. Secret agents. Breaking up, you know, cr- that's breaking up that's international reason, crime ring. You know, hey, that's the <laughs> reason they did gadget. promote me to E8 or E9. Not only that, but because I wouldn't have made a good E8 or E9. Uh, and yeah. he'll, he'll – Vouch for yeah, this. I, you have to be political if you're in the E8 or E9 position, uh-oh. correct? Uh-oh. Well, I'm, I'm not even going to go there, but what uh-oh. I will say is that. <laughs> oh, I could see that look on his face. It was somewhere between I ain't answering this and I just smelled a fart. I don't, but it was, it wasn't good. So I'm trying to put you on the spot. No. Yeah. Uh, hey, he's trying to back me in the corner, but I'm not going to uh-huh. let him. Hey, he ain't gonna, he ain't I'm not going to let him. I'm not yeah. going to let him. That's, gonna that's why he made the eight and the nine. There's a reason okay. he made 30 and you made 24 and a half. Yeah, 24 you know? and a half. But, hey, oh, they did me a favor by kicking me out. <laughs> okay, they didn't know it at the time, but they did do me a favor by oh, kicking me out. They did you a big favor, so oh man, man alive! Oh, Good grief, secret agent. Because if truth be known, mm-hmm. okay, I should have actually did time. I'd love to know defend. the truth. No, no, <laughs> I'd love to know the truth. No, I'm serious. I mean, okay. That's a loaded phrase. Hold on, hey. <laughs> truth be known. So you're saying you should have done time? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's talk so about. They got I'm, a thing. It's called insubordination. That would have been bit putting it mildly with some of the stuff I got away with. Okay. <laughs> Lordy, they figured out it was cheaper to keep you there. Huh? Well, I guess. There you go. Well, I guess. Less, oh man. Well, right. let's take a break. We'll be back right after this. Fortune favors the bold, the strong, and the brave. For your business to break out of anything holding you back, you need business checking as brave as you are. And we're here to introduce to you the Novo Business Checking. Novo Business Checking. You're running a small business now. Business checking is important. I guarantee you. Make sure you got enough money to A, pay your people, B, buy your stuff, and C, keep your lights on. So it's a hard thing to keep up with. Novo is a powerfully simple business checking, and unlike the traditional banking model, Novo has no minimum balances, no transaction limits, and no hidden fees. It is FDIC insured. Instead of a one-size-fits-all approach, Novo is customized to your business to save you time and free up cash flow. With seamless integrations to Stripe, Shopify, QuickBooks Online, and more, that's why fans call it the Swiss Army knife of business checking accounts. How cool is a Swiss Army knife? I mean, we've all had one, right? Multiple. Oh, yeah. I love the toothpick. I still got one. My, yeah. I don't know where my toothpick is. Yeah, and the tweezers. Little tweezers. Yeah, they fantastic. The scissors is what yeah. I use the most. <laughs> Signing up for Novo is quick, secure, and free. Join the community of over 150,000 fearless small businesses who found the customizable business checking solution that admires their brave. Sign up for your free business checking account right now at novo.co slash duck plus Duck Call Room listeners get access to over $5,000 in perks and discounts. 
go to novo.co slash duck to sign up for free. Novo.co slash duck. Novo Platform Inc. is a fintech, not a bank. Banking services provided by Middlesex Federal Savings, FA, member FDIC. Terms and conditions apply. So I want to hear JR tell his version of what it was like to go hunting with us for the first time. That's what I want to hear. This ought to be, and this ought to be good. All right, so we, we, me and Si have told the story before, but truth be told. I don't know if you can handle the truth. <laughs> oh, he's like an old boy. He's like an old boy. I don't, know if, you can, I don't know if you can handle the truth yeah. about yeah. the hunting story. Well, well, tell us, tell us about not this year's veterans hunt because it did. Because all we did this year was look at the sky and eat tartar burgers. Well, I would tell you about the hunt this year, but Cy si stood us up. He decided Ooh, to not move around and hunt with us. I had something on the calendar, and, yeah. you know, and I don't know how. We all missed it. Everybody missed yeah. it. Yeah. Well, we had fun, even though we didn't kill a duck this year. Well, Cy si ain't we, been duck hunting in 2020. Well, that's yet. Right. I don't blame him either. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> even though. Hey, look, I did listen. That's the shocker of all shock. Because he said, hey, he called me and said, hey, what about, and I said, well, what do you think? He said, look, if it was up to me, I wouldn't even come come tomorrow. There you go. You yeah. finally wouldn't. Oh, hey, I just said, uh, okay, I won't be there. You finally wouldn't <laughs> well, be then, an hey, insubordinate. Every day he would call and I'd check in with him and say, well, did y'all kill anything? He said, no, nah, we ain't killing nothing. I said, well, I won't be there tomorrow either. Well, that way I missed about half of this year's season. Uh, okay, I didn't go for about a month. Uh, I anyway. of it. I, uh, there yeah, wasn't, I just, there I wasn't a duck to be man. found this but, year. Let's but, hear JR's version but, of, of the okay. veterans' hut. Last year, though, last year was a big time, though. It was. It was a good time. So, um, yeah, I remember Matt Matt gave me a call and went, hey, hey, man, Stone's got an opportunity for us to do some veterans' hunt, you know, down in down down with the guys, and Sy's going to go out with us. And, you know, we got all excited. And then you called me back and you went, hey, I got an extra spot. You got somebody. And I went, I got 11,000 people that have come down here and hunt, right? <laughs> but I called the major. Remember Major oh, John? Yeah. Major oh, yeah. John major came John. down. Major John came down with his retired Marine Corps major. Remember him, Sy? <laughs> yeah, I remember the first thing you told him. I remember he blew a duck on one time. <laughs> hey, put that thing in your pocket. I'll never take it out again. So I don't care if you are a major. So so Jay got us out there, loaded us up in this blind, and you know we we got out there and getting into that blind was actually a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be. I mean we went out there and that that the, the hole to get in there wasn't no bigger than a than a little dog door. It didn't. Oh yeah, you got to go shoulder shoulder oh, yeah. by shoulder. Well, welcome, Phil, yeah. welcome to my life. Yeah. I had to get down to my belly and low crawl in. Yeah. There. You know Phil does that on purpose. He makes some doors like that because he <laughs> likes watching Godwin and and Martin. Try to get through that little 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 then door. We're, then we're pulling chairs <laughs> throw, and gear through there. Throw tip that. on that. Next time you go, if you put your butt in first, it's way easier. Yeah. Get up there, turn around, jump up on the door, and then you can shimmy in there, and you're good to <laughs> oh, go. Oh yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> yeah. Goblin though, he just kind of, he just you know, boom. <laughs> we were like, we were low crawling trying to get through that door. Oh yeah. Carry all that gear in Sometimes there. Sometimes you got to watch out for that. Yeah. Raccoon feces. Yeah, when you're low crawling. Maybe the raccoon himself still up in there. I ain't trying to hide that story before we go. Why does a raccoon crap on the inside of the door when he could turn his butt around and then drop in the water? They <laughs> get be, they, they get must be related to Curly Don. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. See, that's going to hijack the story. No, go back, well, go back hey, to the hunting story. That's We're a back. good story for us to tell later. Go ahead, JR. I'm sorry. So we go. all got out there in the blind that morning, right? And we're pulling all that gear in that little bitty door, and we're trying to get everybody in there. There was, what, seven of us, I think? Yeah. There were seven of us that all got in that blind. And then and then Jay, Jay leaves, and as soon as he leaves the blind, the major gets his calls out, right, and yeah. starts blowing on yeah, the I, I went to go get the boat Yeah. because it was time to go. <clears throat> we were going in for a little lunch, and I heard that duck call crank up. <laughs> and, and and I looked. They had a couple of mallards working, but I, I'll be honest with you, it didn't sound nothing like a duck. <laughs> well, the major was a wailing on it. He oh was, man, he was he was wailing on it. He was wailing. So and I called I, I called Jr. And I said, Hey, tell, tell whoever's blowing that call, they need to put it in their pocket if they want to kill anything. <laughs> <laughs> Just so happened to be a major in the Marine Corps. Oh, square jaw devil dog. But we went back out that afternoon, right? We went back out that afternoon. We was all in there. We was all in there, and the major pulled out his call, and he started to blow, and Jay looks down the blind at him right in the eyes, and he goes, you can stop blowing that call. <laughs> and the major was like, you don't want me to call no more? And Jay was like, no. 
<laughs> you don't want to call. Well, that's water. always an uncomfortable <laughs> thing. <man. laughs> and the I whole blind, care. and the whole blind was just just went quiet for a minute to watch to see what was going to happen. That's Phil's favorite line. <laughs> Phil's line on that one. He don't want to hurt nobody. So y'all get on them gadwall calls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you ever hear Phil say Drake whistle, Drake whistle, that that means quit yeah. blowing you up. Get call. rid of your call. Yeah. You know, Jace does that now too. He said, "Y'all, y'all quit blowing them matter to hen calls." Then he'll go, "Hey, hey, hey, hey." Yeah. Oh yeah. And he'll crank down on it. Oh yeah. That's but, the. But it it was man. But you get off work, you get off easier talking about a, a man's woman. Oh yeah. Than his duck call. Or his dog. Or his dog. Talk about yeah. the duck calling or the dog. Yeah, that yeah. major. He probably looked at you a little cross-eyed too, didn't he? Oh yeah. Yeah. He was, Which I, I, he I, was not happy with Jay. I, I, he was not happy with Jay. I, I will tell you this. He I was. Took a stride, though. I was a little bit nervous, but I was gonna stand firm on that. <laughs> How the many rule, feet was in between you and him? Oh, he was at the other end of the blind. Oh, yeah, I'd stand firm, too, then. <laughs> yeah. He had a long way to go to get to you. So, yeah. <laughs> he had to belly crawl all the way down there to get to you. Yeah, that's, yeah. You yeah, got time please. to move, man. <laughs> the rule is, if you don't sound like a duck, don't blow the call. That's the rule. But some people have to be told. But You notice he looked at me when he said that? Yeah. the And, and you can tell Major John, I'll tell him when I see him. <laughs> I'm not going to apologize because he didn't sound like a duck. <laughs> we do the same thing to Uncle Si. Yeah. He breaks that mattered hen call out, and guess what? Look down the other end of the blind say, Si, you need to put that in your pocket. <laughs> well, I'm going to well, well, tell you, though. I'm going to tell you. So there was a duck that was shot down on the left end. There was a duck shot down there in the morning on the left end, and my brother Matt claimed that duck, right? Uh-oh. Now, to this day, Matt Matt has never shot a duck in his life. He thinks he has, but he's never shot a duck. He got in his the life. same problem I got. Claiming? <laughs> I think uh, I know the shot you're talking about. No, no, no. It was a 75 yard shot left to right on a gap. Right to left, yeah. I, guess yeah, left I right already right. know who's going to claim that. Uh, no, I saw it. I saw the footage of it. The major. <laughs> The major clipped that duck. John, John shot him? Yes, he did. It was, it was no doubt the footage, the camera was right behind him. Well, I was actually going to give credit to Si. Well, no, no. I, 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 was, I, was, I don't gonna, want Matt to have credit for no, shooting No, Matt, me and Matt was raised up. Okay, I did kill him. Matt claimed it. <laughs> oh, anyway, you okay, want to talk. But I remember the one that John killed. Oh, yeah, it was a shot. Okay. That was yeah, a long he shot. A good hey, shot. He might not could blow a duck yeah. off, but the man can shoot. Oh, yeah. And that's how you know yeah. he can't blow a duck off. That's right. <laughs> if you can shoot him at eighty, you ain't getting them real close. To he you. hit that. He hit that mallard over what? top of us in the afternoon. Oh yeah, that, that was that was passing from 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 behind us. He hit that. Mallard. Oh, he shot that one too. Oh yeah, he shot that. Oh one yeah, for sure. Oh, he's a shotgunner. Yeah. But I'm, a, I'm. This is in John's defense. You know, you know, don't feel bad, John. Okay, because you know, according <laughs> to the people in the blind, when you hunt with the Robertsons, okay, there ain't but two people, maybe three. Okay. That can call a duck. That'd be Phil Robertson, Jason Robertson, and I'll, Stone. I'll include Stone in that. The rest of them, it wouldn't make any difference who, what their resume <laughs> was. According to Phil and Jason Robertson, uh, no one else can call. Yeah. Oh, you are right about that. And so some hey, of that did rub off on me. I, yeah. I would, I'll be the first to admit it. So I tell you, same, <laughs> same. <laughs> same. You ought to try telling the landowner to shut up. <laughs> You want to you want to talk? I'm about, the only want, one that can tell them. About, you want to hey, talk about uh, get weird? Yeah, I'm the only one that can tell them and get away with it because yeah. my last uh, name is Robertson. Yeah, but, uh, you, but hey, both of them are full of. <clears throat> when you go places and you tell the board is paying a note on the place, hey, put that duck call up. That, that takes a special kind of friendship oh, yeah. there. I, I bet you had to phrase that just right. Yeah, I generally just I when he knows when I quit blowing, it it, it ain't working. Like, let, let's let's all get quiet, you know, and then I'll start easing back in there. But, yeah, it's, it's getting to the point that, hey, you'd be better off to leave your duck all at the house. Easy now. We still got to sell them things. He didn't mean that. He didn't mean that. He he meant crazy. buy more of them. Uh, you, need, you need to buy more of those. Yeah, things. you need different tones. That's, That's crazy what he meant. talks, huh? Yeah, don't be saying hey, stuff like that. Okay, in other words, y'all tell me I need dog. practice. Okay. No, no, in other words, I'm telling you, stay out of the business. Oh, okay. We'll be fine. Right. Hey, you Look. can't kill ducks without duck calls. You retired. We ain't. Oh, it helps. Oh, it it gets them from 40 to 20. Yeah, That helps. You know, but anyway. Well, Jr. We appreciate you stopping by, man. That's a good time. Hey, hold on before we before we wrap it up. One more thing. What you got? I I would Jr. Tell us about what y'all got going with the uh, with the veterans hut up north. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm interested in that. Yeah, so uh, Major John um, runs Camp Valor Outdoors. It's a nonprofit where he brings together uh, veterans uh, and uh, 
connects them through things in the outdoors. He helps the ill, injured, and wounded veterans. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to pitch in to help him out. So we're going to put together a veterans pheasant hunt, raise a little bit of money up in Emory, South Dakota this year. Uh, I invited Stone and Sai to come up. Hey, uh, I've been there. Yeah. You need to do that. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. We're gonna, I've hunted right there around that. I, I volunteered that, that. That is good. That is good. Good pheasant hunting up it there. Is. And um, we got a we got a four star lodge up there. Everything is included. So we're looking for some look, looking for some folks to sponsor some vets and take them out hunting. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. No, I've been there. You're gonna enjoy that. That that's a that's a really cool part of the world. And Sai, you're gonna like it. Well, I think so. In South going, Dakota, yeah. If the pheasant is running down the road, you can whack him. I'm going to tell you. Running right down the middle of the road. That's just common sense. <laughs> <laughs> Pheasant hunting is a is truly a gentleman's sport. You get breakfast at 8 o'clock. The guy picks you up at 945. You got your limit, and you're back in for lunch by noon. It's, yeah. Uh, the one time I went, it was blowing snow and blowing sideways. It was anything but gentleman's, but it sure was fun. <laughs> well, hey, it was a lot of fun. That's one that, because i seen one on television. It's where they line up a bunch of guys and they walk through a field and it's usually snow covered. Uh huh. Okay, and then you got a bunch of guys at the end of this field with shotguns. That's if they slick them, you. And they shoot them as they come over. And you want to looking? Be- I'm looking. Okay, and they got the dogs and the people walking through, and there are literally, when I say thousands, <clears throat> mm-hmm. there are literally thousands of festivals well, look, getting si- up. So si- we got to figure it out. We're gonna put you on the back of a golf cart, and they're yep. gonna put it in reverse. Yep. And they're gonna back you. You go have your shotgun ready. And we de- we're just going to back you through the weeds. When them yep. pheasants get up, you shoot them. No, put Sai on the end. On one of the put him line. as a blocker. Put yeah. him as a blocker. He'll make that yeah. shot on the ones that get away. Yeah. You can't put him in the field. He's going to try to shoot him right off the end of the gun barrel. Then the people of South Dakota is going to judge <laughs> well, no, you hey, hard. Hey, <laughs> they got to let him get away from <laughs> They frown upon that get up boom. Oh, do they? Oh, they don't. No. Oh. This is you traditional. Gotta, you gotta have a. You gotta be a gentleman. You gotta that. let him get up, you get gotta going. Him, you gotta be a gentleman. That's why I said get on the end where you ain't gotta okay. walk. Say, it ain't well, near as hey, aggravating. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> be a by blocker. The way, by the way, this is the same major that we were talking about earlier with the duck call. Awesome, awesome guy as far as serving other humans, yeah. and uh, he does a lot, a lot for our vets. Yeah. You know the yeah. best news about pheasant hunting though? What's that? Ain't no call. You okay. ain't got to worry about the major. <laughs> 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 Things won't get weird with the major. Uh, Kick him up and shoot him. Oh, well, that's awesome. Camp, what's the name? Camp Valor? It's Camp Valor Outdoors. They're out of uh, Holden, uh, Missouri. Okay. They have a website. Do you know? Yep. Or? yep. Um, Camp well, Valor Outdoors. Uh, they're on Facebook, and uh, I think they got a dot .org as well. Perfect. We'll put yeah. it in the show notes. All right, man. We'll see. We'll be that back right after this. Si? Yeah. Our good friends over at Samaritan's Purse are back in action. Look, they're fine people, Amen. okay? If you have some extra cash, you need to donate it to Samaritan Purse. That's exactly okay? right. These are people that go worldwide, okay? Whenever there's a disaster or kids need help, need surgery, life-saving surgery, whatever, American Purse does it all. <laughs> they help with flood relief, flood relief. They help people that need surgeries, you know. They're class one people. I I couldn't agree more. And the name is Samaritan's Purse. I know you get a little tongue tied. Oh, yeah. He said American. Hey, I can't say. But <laughs> anyway, it's our friends at Samaritan's Purse. Look, you do know that they run to action when action is needed. So it should be no shock to you that they are now setting up shop in the Ukraine. More than two million refugees have fled Ukraine. You've heard us talk about Samaritan's Purse many times and how they truly are the hands and feet of Jesus. They've been at it for more than 50 years, and once again, Samaritan's Purse is on the ground working to meet the needs of these families and point them to the light and hope of Jesus Christ. They mobilize right away airlifting relief supplies in a field hospital which is being set up in Ukraine. That emergency field hospital has nearly 60 beds and two operating rooms and will be able to receive trauma victims, maternity patients, and anyone who simply has no place else to go for medical care. Samaritan's Purse also has disaster response specialist staged in Poland, Romania, and Moldova. Please join us in praying today for everyone who has been affected by this crisis and for an end to this conflict. Here is what we need you to do if you would like to support Samaritan's Purse and the people of Ukraine. We have two options. One, go to samaritanspurse.org slash duck to donate or learn more. Again, that's samaritanspurse.org slash duck or click the link in the show notes. You can also call the direct line 
1-800-789-1776 and donate today. Again, that number is 1-800-789-1776. Did y'all know Willie's afraid of cotton balls? Cotton yeah. balls? He's Willie has cotton, cotton ball phobia. Huh. And I told Kay, I said, I bet you it has to do with a nurse. A nurse snuck up behind him and had the cotton ball over the needle and then popped him with a shot. Popped him. <laughs> Oh, yeah, speaking of cotton, balls, of cotton balls, I saw something the other day that I think is going to be the next big thing. So, <clears throat> next big thing. This, this guy was putting cotton balls. He was standing behind the table. My, I walked around the corner, and my seven year old daughter was watching this, putting cotton balls in his ears, doing his mouth like this. And the next thing you see is another guy standing across the table doing this slapping oh. him, slap contest, lining him up. Open handed. He had a cotton balls in both ears and he come back, I'm talking about and popped everything he had, slapped him in the face, and it and it knocked the dude out. Smooth. They had catchers back behind him. Just slapping each other? Oh, he knocked his he knocked this guy out with Oh a yeah. Slap. Oh yeah. Slap fights is I what they call him. No, he, he I mean knocked him out cold. You never slapped anybody? No. I, no, I don't slap. Have you seen that? Man, uh-huh. People don't slap me. Big old boys too. I mean, big boys. <laughs> Hold on, you take, hit me with a broom handle or a hammer. <laughs> don't you open. Slap, you slap me. These and guys we would take turns City, buddy. until somebody got knocked out. No, no, that's why I was asking. And you saw me. This is something that's fixing to catch on. Oh yeah, it's gonna catch on. They know <laughs> like the UFC. I got to watch it. I couldn't quit watching it. It, it just. They're really hitting a bigger sign of disrespect, though, than somebody no, just saw you with an open lapping. palm. The human being is losing it. <laughs> no, it's been gone. Yeah. They ain't, yeah. They ain't yeah, losing it. But, I mean, you, when you slap people for fun. Oh, that's, oh, hey, go ahead and knock me out. See, yeah, see if you can find it show it. Oh, my goodness. There's like 60,000 people watching. Mm-hmm. There, it's like a stadium. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh-oh. But they have faults and all kinds of things in that mess. Oh yeah, you can't flinch. Or... Yeah, like if you move your head, if you don't just stand there and take it, you get you get slapped again. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, look at this old boy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at Sai. Look at Sai's face. Uh... <laughs> Sai, you ready to join the tour? Your people, you people have lost y'all flipping mind. <laughs> he started combing his beard after he got slapped to prove what a man he is. And that was to get the saliva out of it. <laughs> oh, that's big. But there's weight classes. Oh yeah. Heavyweight. I think they got uh, women doing it too. Yeah, yeah. There was a woman. She was sitting there fixed to do. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Obscure sports. <laughs> somebody Obscure. somebody fixed a die. Yeah, this is on the Ocho. Yeah. He is. Is. He come on right oh. after. Whoa! I thought <laughs> you don't want to fool with that gal. I love. I'm sorry. The sitting on the she, just, she was standing there and they slapped her and she all she did was just a little bit of this. And I mean, I then she was it was full force and all it would do like this. Oh yeah. And then she said, "Now it's my turn." They should start doing that in UFC. Just a little. <laughs> yeah. A tie yeah, The breaker. human race. I'm telling you, boys. Hey, what's wrong with them? We're fixing to go extinct. Oh, they got that. <laughs> <laughs> How uh, did we get here? Oh, could you believe that? That I mean, that's the sport now. <clears throat> Fill your ears for the full of cotton cotton balls and then tell the Willie's hey, out. Boy, knock me out. So yeah. Willie's out if you got to put cotton balls. Yeah, we just learned that Willie, the man who's been the meanest to me in my whole life, is afraid of cotton. Like, <laughs> like he don't want it going in his ears, or like, he don't like seeing them. He don't no, like. No, no, no. He's got a touch. So like, so like, if we just start putting he's random ones a... in his truck and oh. stuff like that. Next time he's in this room, I'm just gonna throw him at him the entire just, just one. No, no, the the film crew. He was always climbing with them, fooling with them, and doing pranks on them. Yeah. Well, they finally got him back because they brought like a a. Wash tub of cotton Beautiful. balls, yeah, of cotton balls and poured on him. He just uh. <laughs> he freaked out when they poured it on him. I'm serious, Corey. This is what Corey told us on the on the podcast. The now, day. say that's just dumb. <laughs> that's Sorry, weird. boss, that's dumb. Yeah. If you got a phobia, it's all kind if of phobia. If you're scared of snakes, okay, that's a phobia. Yeah. If you're scared of spiders, okay, scared of wasps, okay, yeah. cotton ball. Well, What's I that thing going to do to you? you? I, I guarantee you, it, you trace it back, it's going to be a nurse popped him with a needle and she hid the she hid the needle with a cotton ball. 
Yeah, we need to send him to therapy. We need I to, need to know. Need I, to, that boy needs to yeah. undergo hypnosis. Well, hey, he need needed therapy. The cause of that he is. needed therapy for other reasons, not just cotton balls. It's probably worse. Like the whole we, Robertson family needs therapy. <laughs> Out loud. That's you too. Me included. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. I, I was need just therapy. making sure you you realized you oh, were still no, in there. I, hey, I know I need therapy. Oh, don't we all? I spent twenty four and a half years in the military. I, I, need, I need therapy just being married to one. Oh Lord. <laughs> mm. Careful. She doesn't. Never, she never don't a dull listen. mama, boys. <laughs> People ask my wife, she's like, can you believe John David said that? And she's like, what did he say? And I'm like, she, don't, she ain't listening. I can say whatever I want on here, and my wife will never hear about it mm. unless y'all uh, tell her. But, I, yo, when you come to it, when you say, okay, when you say something like, uh, uh, are you normal? Nope. There's no such thing as normal. No, no. Especially you. Okay, if it was, I would never want to be that. No. We can okay. tell. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. even more thankful of? What? That that isn't normal well hey <laughs> hey normal to me would be boring okay that's yeah. right yeah you know, so I'm, I'm anything but normal okay because yeah. i'm never boring i agree well these people yeah. in the slap fighting ain't normal because yeah. no that, they're insane i'm trying to are. i was like it must be for a million dollars to just get the nah. crap knocked out of you no nah, nah, probably for like some hooters gift cards or something <laughs> Wait a minute! Wait a minute! That's what I looked at. Don't go there. I mean, I'm just saying. Let's like, look. Let's see if you can find out what the. I saw one. Prize. It was fifty thousand yeah. rubies. Oh, that's Russian. Yeah, which was seven hundred dollars. Hey, wait! Oh, I got to say this. I can yeah. understand Hooters. Okay. I can't understand slapping. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back hey. after this before this gets anywhere. Well, I'm just Thank you for it. tuning hey. in. This is I'm the Duck Call Radio Family hey. Show. We love you. Good night. Johnny D, we're in that mailbag. Hello at Hello, duckcallroom.com. That's the email address. Johnny D, what's in there? Some people don't know how to email. No. And I'm just going to call out a guy named Cody from Southern Florida who put his entire email in the subject line. That hey, I'm Cody from Southern Florida, and I was wondering if you could read this on the podcast. Also, can you guys get other people on the podcast? Willie, Phil, Miss K, and like John Luke, maybe. What's wrong with us? Why, huh? And did you watch last week? Hey, like, where you at? Variety. I'm just confused on why he wants four other people instead of us, and why he wants variety. Why it was all in the subject line. Anyways, that was his question. Why did you say? I don't know. It was oh. weird. I'm just I telling you. I couldn't tell. Well, what's the question? Text. There was that was it. We well, get my, weird emails. Oh, that's my point. Uh, I got. You. Okay. And I read weird all email. of them. Wow. Anyways, um, relationship advice from Pace. Uh oh. Hello, my name is Pace, and I would like advice on this subject. I have had feelings for this girl for a couple years, and I asked her out, but her parents said she can't date till college. What do y'all <laughs> think I should do? I think you need to hit up <laughs> Willie on that one. That sounds like I've heard that story before. Yeah. But can't date till college. Well, then you just got to wait, huh? I mean, it's up to her. I don't know. I'd probably quicken up the pace. Yeah. I would think so. <laughs> me and, their, me and their, her parents would not get along. That, that's code for they don't like you. We bro. don't like you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if this, you figured this, this part this, of it out, but her parents ain't digging young you. Lady. <laughs> this is a parent problem. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. But what that, is the right age to let your daughter de- – my daughter's three. Yeah. <laughs> so that's too young. 16. 16. Yeah, about that. If you're going to send her out there with the power of a vehicle, mm-hmm. then she's she's earned the right to date. I mean, she she's there. That's good. You know, as long as you've raised them right and everything's respectful. And, but in theory, I mean, the young man should be coming to pick her up and have a, mm-hmm. have a strict curfew and all that. But, yeah, I mean, I'd say mid-teens is a good time to start. Well, do y'all agree with me out. on this? What? This is, this is not a young lady. This is a parent problem. Yeah, no. I mean, he was doing a super, like, what's the word, chivalrous thing by he asking the parent. Yeah. No, he yeah. didn't ask. He asked her out, and the parent yeah. said, uh uh-uh. Oh, well, she may be straight lying to you, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, that True. sounds like a likely story. Like, if my if mom said not, you should go talk to the said, parents. Yeah, then ask them. Well, them. I was thinking the same way you were. Sweep the parents off their the feet. Ask the parents. Yeah. If he could take her out. I asked her out, but her parents said she can't how, date till college. However, how old is he? How old is he? Do we know? He's Pace. 
he's paced. But I mean, but I if know. We I mean, Google if the, but if the girl is like twelve or thirteen, obviously yeah. the dad's response is probably yeah. like, no, she ain't dating yeah. till college. She's like, old enough to have an email. Well, that doesn't mean nothing. You yeah. got to have an yeah. email for a Nintendo yeah. Switch. Yeah, we're account. missing some. Like, uh, I, we ain't getting details. the full story here. Like lots update, of variables. Update. So. Pace, we need more information. Yeah, we more need more information. Pace, so email us in with advice. your age. Also, I want, you, but I want you to go talk to their. If you're 12, I especially want you to go talk to her parents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you're 16, yeah. I also think it would be you got to go. You got to pull, be a man, go up and say, "Hey, I know y'all don't want this, but here's why I'm telling you, you do." But Pace, I'm just gonna be honest with you. My gut says that that was her way of saying no without it being her. Well, it may, it may. So, be. Which look. Burn. This is not going to be the first time you hear no in your yeah. life. That's yeah. right. So pick yourself up by the bootstraps and keep yeah. on trucking. That's fine. Yeah. Girls she may mean. say she may say yes in two years. You don't know, but just keep on yeah, trucking. You start at the top of the totem pole and work your way down. <laughs> or you start at the bottom and work your way up. <laughs> Whichever way you want to do it there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? Okay. What's All right, next? Christian girlfriend was, advice. Okay, yeah, this is. I just knew on this one, me and the prayer were fixing to have a big problem here. I'm, I'm, okay, because if she <laughs> caught my eye and I'm interested in her, hey. just a little bit about, well, hey, you don't know. We just need, there's, we're missing key information in this story. And if uh, she doesn't work uh, out, my friend. Like most relationships like that between a female and a male, uh -oh. you don't want to say, okay, hey, you can't do this. Oh, we're a Romeo and Juliet thing. We're yeah. Uh -oh. Okay, that's one of them deals that, uh-oh, wait a minute, you just, you've, you've maybe, you know, made this worse than it was. Yeah. By saying no. Moving on before we get too far yeah. down this But way. my friend Jake in high school. There we go. Shout out uh, to my friend Jake. He did tell me once after a girl turned me down, he said, well, you got to lower your standards to up your average. So, <laughs> <laughs> might be something you need to look at. Well, Sounds maybe, like baseball. Maybe there's some truth in that, you know. That's my buddy. He's a duck hunter. He's a good guy. <laughs> Anyways, Colin. 25 from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, he he's, needs, he's Christian girlfriend. We're, we're just staying in relationships today, boys. Um, he grew up, read the Bible, blah, 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 went to church. Anyways, I haven't been the best Christian, and I am doing things I know is a sin. That's a good step, just saying it out loud. I know I need to change, but I'm not sure how to because of my girlfriend. We've been dating for two years, and we both know we're going to marry each other. She does believe in God and was raised in church. She's non-denominational, yada, yada, yada. Let's just say we're both long from God and need to change. I kind of have a fear of bringing up the conversation of being more godly because of what she'll think of it. How do I get myself to do it and get I'm gonna say get our relationship to be more godly without the fear without the fear she may not like it or take it seriously. Mm. Dun dun dun. That's There's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. 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 So okay, I, that, I had to read that, but old, basically, old 25. 25. So they're about to get married. Yeah. Sounds like um, he realizes they're going down a path he doesn't like, but he wants to be with her, but he wants to veer both him and her back. To God. Well, yeah. Hey, I'm proud of you're you. You're the only way she's going to get there, probably. So yeah. that's a good thing. I would say 25 years old. Mm, um, if, if the problem is what I'm thinking it is, and I'm not going to assume anything, just go ahead and ask her to marry you. Yeah, and, I, that and, was advice I was going to give. Put a ring you. on her hand. Because you're old enough now to, I mean, 25, no. I mean. I think I had yes. one kid at 25. Did you? Yeah. I had one at 27. I think. And you said something, okay, that takes me down this way. You said we're doing things we know are wrong. And you're talking about, well, how do I change this? Well, you got to stop doing things you know that are wrong first. <clears throat> well, yeah, and the recognition of wrong is yeah. the first step. Yeah, you've done, yeah. done oh, that. Yeah. You've great, recognized I... you're doing things that you know are wrong. Yeah, but if you go ahead and ask her to marry you, then you're going to have to go ask somebody to perform the ceremony. Odds are they're going to say, that's fine, but you're going to have to go through counseling with us first. Mm -hmm. There is your way in to get into a more godly relationship because they're going to give you, in theory, if they're a minister at a church, they're going to go through some steps of Christian marriage counseling with you. My advice, 
pay very close attention during those classes. <laughs> Do not brush them off. <laughs> because you know what? When you're sitting back there a year later saying, man, this marriage is tough. We need counseling. And they go through the same steps they did to you in the premarital. You're like, oh, yeah, I probably should have listened to what they were saying. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from experience here. Guilty. Like, so that is your first step on getting back towards God, in my opinion, is just go ahead, pop the question, do the things. And go ask somebody that's going to perform the ceremony. Don't go to Vegas. Don't don't listen to Elvis. Like, I mean, it's cool. I mean, I get it. It's been on TV. But, <laughs> you know, get you a real minister. Get you somebody that's going to care about you in your life and will invest in you. Yeah. And, and that's going to start your path towards. But if your marriage is going to work, and I've also noticed when we take our eyes off of God, we struggle in our marriage. Mm -hmm. So... Like, as long as we're both moving and striving towards the same thing, everything's great. But you, you'll you get relaxed or redundant. You know, you'll, you'll just get complacent in a lot of things. And when that happens, you start having problems. You're like, oh, oh, time out, time out. Let's get let's get the first thing back to first, and then we'll, yeah. we'll go from Reach there. So. I think you hit the point, okay, is, is the starting point. You're saying, okay, hey, look, if, you know, marry her, okay, and then, like you're talking about, you got to get somebody to marry you. So when they're going to take you, we got to go through counseling first. Mm -hmm. So there's your there's your starting point. Yeah. But but you're going to have to set the example. Yeah. I mean that's biblical. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. that's biblical. Ooh. The husband. Because it is God's I mean, institution. We're talking yeah, about. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, marriage is God's institution. And if you're wanting to get married, that yeah. shows me right there you have yeah. a faith in something other than yourself. Because if not, yeah. you just shack up. Yeah. Call it good. You don't have to get married. Yeah. You know, whatever. So, but you you are the head of the household once this happens, and the only way you're going to get her there is if she follows you. So you got to lead. That was good, uh, Martin. Bringing the heat, man. Good work. Hey, when you've sucked at it as much as I have, you know how to. <laughs> I mean, I'm just telling you. Like, you talking about recognition? That's yeah. that's where it's at. Oh, I'm okay. telling you. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. I have been a downright failure sometimes okay. in that area. Yeah. Like, I mean, no, hey, don't feel like a long know. ranger. No, you ain't by yourself, buddy. Hey, hey. it uh, it doesn't bother me to yeah. admit it either. Yeah, like, uh, me and my know. me and my wife had it figured out, so we didn't need that premarital counseling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I recommend like every five years you go for a little redose of marriage counseling anyway in case you become blind to some things. Do something. Go hit it for a couple of months. That ain't going to hurt you nothing. I mean, it hurts your pocketbook for a little bit, but, you know, that's an investment into your marriage. So. We just did a whole retreat with a bunch of other See? people to talk about, hey, let's make sure we're on the right track. That's exactly right. And, yeah, I think that's all great advice that you gave him there. Yeah. Get married, man. Absolutely. We're telling you to pop the question. It's fantastic. Hey, somebody wrote a song about it. Put a ring on it. Uh-oh. <laughs> if you like it, then you should have. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What's our Bible verse, Johnny D? Sorry. Uh-oh. Um, uh -oh. Oh. That got weird. Okay. Uh, I'm sticking with the theme I've been sticking with. Second Samuel 22, 2 through 4. He said, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge and my savior. From violent people, you save me. I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise and have been saved from my enemies. People, the Lord is your rock. Amen. Make him that. Amen. We'll see y'all next time right here in the duck call room. Shout out to our friend JR for joining us. Absolutely. Yeah.